Hello YouTube, we're gutting out this John Deere 70. We're stripping it down. This is going to be our hot rod garden tractor. Well, lawn tractor. It's not big enough to be a garden tractor. Uh, we already showed the tires that are going on the front. Those are like 13 inches tall. I think the new ones I got are like 15. Those are 6 inch rims. These are 8 inch rims. I took a picture there. 18 by 8.5 wide on an 8 inch rim. Well, the tires I bought are 20 inches tall and 8 inches wide, so they're going to be narrower. Because we kind of want a hot rod look. And then we'll have the smooth tires on the front. And we're thinking about putting the axle out on the front of the frame. We'll move around there and show you my idea here. Okay, this deck is not too hard to get off. I had to take one of the brackets and unbolt it right there because I couldn't lift it up with a jack to get it off the notch. See where it's got that hole in it? Same way as on the other side. It's not too hard. And the front has pins in it. I'll show you that when I get around there. John Deere belt. You can almost from here see the yellow lettering. Pretty new looking belt. Uh, this stuff's all stiff, but the blades look good. Uh, that releases your tension on your... That makes that pulley move back and forth. So I got it this way. I hammered it that way. So you can get the belt off easier. So that's all that does. There's supposed to be a spring on it. So, in case anybody's interested, this chute may go on my Alice Chalmers because if you get your foot near there, the blades are right out here on the Alice Chalmers track. So, I may modify this chute to go on there temporarily. But I never kick the blades unless I'm sitting on the tractor. I'm not chopping my foot off. Anyway, let's move around the front. Uh, we're going to be taking the hood off, the front grill off, the engine out. It's going to get lighter and lighter. And then our goal is this week is to get the new tires mounted so we can roll this around and this winter get it in the shop to work on it to start fitting the Honda engine. Uh, I don't think we're going to keep that seat. Let's move around the front here. Okay. These pins are on springs and then there's a little notch in here. You drive them back and then the levers right there go into there. I had to do a little banging. I had to put a, I put a vice grips on here, okay? And then put a ridge behind it and pried to get this over and sprayed it with my blaster spray. I don't know if you can see it, the axle. We want to move that axle out here. And it'll be welded solid. We won't have no pivot. No pivot to it because it won't be a lawnmower no more. So that's one of my design ideas, which is going to make the back end jacked up higher. Uh, a little bit. We may be notching the frame and we may be putting a custom frame on the back of this uh, So it sets lower. We want it to set low kind of like a goat cart would but we still want it to be a garden tractor So if we take it out on the street We're not gonna get busted there technicality there. It's technically will still be a tractor So we'll pause. We'll come back when we've got a little more stuff to show you Okay Okay, some quick clips. We got the hood off front grill. They're self tapping bolts we Got two on each side We don't know if this is the motor mount plate what this is. We really can't see back there yet We're gonna go ahead and take these loose. We got to guarantee to take the belts off We will take a picture of that mechanism under there because it is a clutch Like on the 60 you pull up on a lever and the pulley goes up like cone shape and grabs the pulley on the engine And that's your clutch to engage the blade so we will show that just in case somebody ever comes across one of these. And for future reference for me. Kind of see the front axle a little bit better now. Like I said, we want to move the front axle. we got to study this. We want to put this front axle out here in front of the frame. We may be making custom braces from here to go to the hood. Because that's a big engine. And we'll probably be cutting a lot of metal off back here to get the engine to fit. And there's the battery tray. So there you go on that. This is kind of for some of my reference too. So hang in there. We'll get this thing done today. Uh, okay, here's how the PTO works for the blade. You got a lever up here, which moves this. And see how that does that? Pulls that up and it pivots back in here. I think you know what I mean. And this is cone shape. I took a picture of the other one. The other one I lost the pin that went in here. This has a bolt. We still don't know how the engine comes out yet. That's a pretty nice belt. That for reference case, 
somebody comes across one of these that goes for the deck for the blades this belt shot the drive belt this is so complicated how it goes here and back to the transaxle with the thing with the I really don't even want to explain it <laughs> I don't. it's about as bad as my 112 you got a John Deere 112 you figure out there you go waste no time showing that mechanism just for those of you who are interested now we're gonna get it out of here we got to get the engine off this thing without ruining anything okay we have the engine out we had to take the steering arm loose right here so this could go over so we get on our bolt this cradle is bolted up inside of here somewhere this cradle I showed how it goes up here to these mounts something is broken inside here no compression and if you turn it around play with it enough backwards uh, this will start jumping around I'll play it a little bit before I get off the video of course there's a mouse nest in there but we did take a picture of this you can pause right here if you want I'm assuming that's the seven horse this is the older cast iron block I'm sure it is Does that look like cast iron with aluminum pan I'd say so let me pause and do some scraping we want to make sure okay don't quote me I'm pause this cast iron block aluminum pan see where I scraped it see how it's made I'm assuming that it is don't quote me though I could be wrong trust me I know what I'm doing anyway don't believe people who do that this does have a magneto because there's diodes and charging circuit I'll flip this around and show you the other side and take a picture anybody needs parts within shipping distance we could figure out something because it's just gonna get thrown in the shed I'll never do nothing with it I have a the old Tecumseh motor off my John Deere 112 it needs a coil it's whatever horsepower uh, it's just gonna lay there forever so carburetors jump it's totally corroded uh, like I said there's no compression I'm not looking here to see if there's any valves moving so let's flip this around I show you the charging that board with the diodes on it okay there's your diodes it says mag here whatever's coming from the flywheel I'm assuming this is could be the kill wire there's a white wire this white wire is supposed to be plugged in here so you'd kill it think about it. you ground out the magneto you kill it because look there's a black over here and then everything goes up to your switch switch on the dash see that might help somebody purple white black might help someone a little bit yeah those are one-way diodes because you convert AC to DC alternators alternating current I don't know if this starter is any good we're gonna try I do not know if it'll fit on the aluminum one the other to come to which should be a six horse my modern one on the little 60 which I have the video of it running but I'm not too worried it's got a rope on if I want to play with the thing I'll it it starts a, you know it takes a little bit of pull but I'm not worried if it don't fit I can always pull start that to play with it it's just going to be a toy I keep put away. I'm never probably going to do anything with it. It'll just stay original looking. But there you go. I took a picture out where that cone pulley goes up in there. And it spins on this shaft. And then you got a bolt up in here you take out to get this off. If I'm correct, I'm not taking it apart. It's going in the shed. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe putting that back on here to keep rust off this. Put the bearing thing back on. Got squirrel butt three feet away from me scared scared you know what out of me <laughs> they're just like pets they are they come around I, I was in my truck one day and they're running around my leg to them chasing each other my leg outside the truck like putting up with a bunch of kids anyway stay on topic I'm just showing you all this in case somebody needs see how it has a rope starter see that just for future reference years from now okay let's go take a break then we'll go on to something else it's the wildlife people the wildlife you know who doesn't whoa he's coming after me 
Oh, there he goes. <laughs> it is like, like having pets. Back to work. Hear that? You can see the governor arm jump. Something's broken. No, it won't do it. Yeah, something's broken inside of here. I did see one of the valves move when I took the spark plug out. But I think something's busted in here. I really do. Because the governor arm would jump back and forth when it does that noise. Like the governor exploded. Anyway. Yeah, if you know who mentions that in their videos, Wildlife, let me know if you're sub to the guy. I won't say his channel. We'll just see if you know who I'm talking about. It's the Wildlife people. He'll show like a bird or something during the video. Okay, battery's low. Get back to work. I used some clear Gorilla tape. Should I tape that on there so this don't come off? That way I don't rust. I may need this for another mower because it looks exactly the same to me. So, I'm not going to let that go to waste. Because there's uh, needle bearing, roller bearing in this part. And then it just goes into the cone clutch thing. So, there. I'm saving that part. Back to work. Okay, we're going to attempt to show this on camera. There's your final pulley to your transaxle. The way the vertical motor works is they flip the belt. In order for this to have a horizontal shaft motor, the shaft's going to come out here. This pulley has to turn this way. We're going to try to show you that it, what we mean. Can you see that move? Can you see that move that way? It's kind of hard. There's a spring broken here. See that? See what direction it's moving as you were going forward? Trust me, that's the way it goes. Same as on the John Deere. I thought this just had welds here. Must be welded on the inside. So I had to get rid of that piece just so we could look in there. We're going to get everything out of here but the steering box. Everything's going but the steering box. That's going to be one long belt from an engine there, but we'll figure it out. Or we may have to, uh, well, we can't do that. That's too far over. The engine's going to have to be as far over. Uh, the belt on the engine, the clutch is going to have to be on the outside of the crankshaft probably, or the motor hangout is. We don't even know yet. But that's why we're gutting everything out of the way. We're not going to do this piece by piece. We're going to get rid of it all now. And what we need, we'll put back in later. So that's it for the day. We are done. I got this thing, I think, in third gear. But here is your transaxle. There's the brake mechanism down there, which jump, jumps across over in here somewhere with all the rods. I had two broken springs. Uh, two broken springs. So this thing never would have moved forward. The belt, this belt was sloppy, and I still say it's backwards. Usually these roll on the flat side of the belt. It looks like it's rolling on this side of the belt to me. So, and it seems like there's a, one of them holders back there. Yeah, there is. There's one of them keepers back there, so I guess that's the way it runs. It's kind of odd to me, huh? Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next episode on this project.